How's it going everyone? This is my blank. Welcome back to my channel and I think by now we've all got a pretty good understanding in regards to Ryzen 7 CPU performance. In productivity tasks, these CPUs offer excellent performance, but there is a slight miscorrelation between that excellent performance when it comes to gaming. There's all sorts of rumors and speculation as to why that is. My opinion is that it all comes down to how Ryzen is built and the two CCXs. These are interconnected by the data fabric that runs at the RAM speed and I'm not talking about the effective RAM speed. So inter-CCX communications are highly dependent on how fast this link is. However, the problem is that Ryzen and the accompanying motherboards are not exactly giving you the option of running your RAM at high speeds right now, i.e. 2933MHz inclusive and upwards. But it just so happens that I've been tinkering with the settings on my Asus Crosshair 6 Hero board and experimenting with different TF5 versions and I managed to get 3600MHz RAM working on my 1700X with these latencies. This was done using the 2933MHz memory strap and raising the BCLK to 123MHz. As of now, there's no performance difference correlation for running higher BCLK, so the BCLK overclock alone should have zero performance uplift on its own. So I went ahead and tested with these four different RAM speeds on the 1700X clocked at 3.97GHz and kept the 7700K at 5GHz for reference. First, let me explain my RAM choices. Why not 3600MHz on the i7? Well, 3200MHz CL14 is already pretty damn fast and through my own testing, the difference by going to 3600MHz CL16 on the i7 are minimal to non-existent and can be chalked up to usual error. Meanwhile, Ryzen fully benefits from the increased data fabric speeds stemming from the higher RAM frequency, much more so than the actual latency the RAM is running at. Furthermore, as you saw, I didn't test 2933MHz, if you're already running this then kudos to you, it's right up there with the sought after 3200MHz. I included 2666MHz for everyone that is stuck at this level, so they can see what's in store for them when high RAM speeds become more accessible. And 2133MHz for everyone that thinks that RAM speed doesn't matter at all and RAM choice is just a matter of quantity. The graphics card I used is a GTX 1070 that can clock to 2200MHz core and 8900MHz VRAM and I'm testing at quote unquote high settings, meaning a notch down from highest possible in each game, to shift CPU performance to the forefront. This time I opted for 1% and 0.1% low frame rates instead of my usual 5% to get a feel of the actual smoothness these RAM settings will offer during gaming. I'll also point out that I wanted to reuse the 3200MHz results from my Ryzen 1700X review, which you can check out over here by the way, but for the majority of games the numbers didn't match up anymore. And this is what I'm referring to. At the same CPU overclock and 3200MHz RAM, I'm now seeing substantially better performance in a few tested titles like Watch Dogs 2 and Mafia 3. It's the same system as the one from the review, no changes whatsoever besides a new EFI, but I did receive a rather large Windows update a few days ago and there is a rumor silent patch for Ryzen included in them. The idea is that I had to completely redo 3200MHz RAM testing, so this also means that all these benchmarks are really fresh. All the titles I've chosen are really CPU demanding and everything is tested in-game, no pre-built benchmarks. What I'm seeing from all these tests is that RAM speed plays a huge role in Ryzen's performance. Shocker, right? But seriously, some games exhibit a huge difference when paired with fast RAM and therefore a fast data interconnect. Take a look for example at Mass Effect Andromeda, the 0.1% frame rates jump from 49.9 on 2133MHz to 69.8 on 3600MHz RAM. That's a full 20fps or a massive 40% increase. There's no game where the average frame rate will not jump up by going to faster RAM. So running faster RAM will not only give you better average frame rates but will greatly help the CPU's performance in extremely CPU limited scenarios. To this end, check out Rise of the Tomb Raider's 1% low which sees a 10fps difference between 2666MHz RAM and 3600MHz RAM. It's also fairly safe to say that RAM latency plays a lower part for Ryzen than expected. You can't call CL14 for 3200MHz a loose timing, it's fairly tight. Actually, all RAM frequencies here use pretty tight timings, but despite this, all the CPU seems to care about is the RAM-derived CCX interconnect, the data fabric speeds. If fast RAM speeds get open to Ryzen in the future, that means that you don't need to spend a premium to get low latency, high speed RAM. The price difference now between, for example, 
3200MHz CL14 and CL16 is around $20 to $30 for the same manufacturer, and that's money that you don't need to spend specifically for Ryzen. This doesn't matter that latency doesn't play a part, however, it's just that it's not at the forefront in Ryzen's case. For Intel CPUs, both bandwidth and latency matter a lot and everything that you see here also applies to an i7 or i5 or whatever. Simply put, higher RAM bandwidth and the lower latency means better performance in CPU limited scenarios. So, I'll wrap this up without giving you my conclusions and my take on the matter. The numbers paint a pretty easy to construe situation regarding RAM scaling. Should also point out that this is 1080p high settings on a very fast and overclocked GPU. Running ultra settings or upping the resolution will make the existing differences between the 7700K or any modern CPU for that matter diminish to the point of becoming non-existent in some cases. I'm not pitching either system to anyone, just exploring the many ways that one can improve gaming performance on their Ryzen CPU. And with that being said, getting high RAM frequencies to work with Ryzen is extremely hard at the moment. Even if you're lucky and have a good IMC, integrated memory controller on your chip, the motherboards are also a limiting factor. I'm hopeful this situation will change with EFI updates and maybe CPU microcode updates as well, making 3200 plus MHz RAM a tangible thing on the majority of Ryzen CPUs. I guess time will tell, but everyone still needs to be patient and wait out the teething pains a new platform has. If you liked this video, don't forget to share to help others. I want to see your comments, questions, and suggestions down below, as usual. And thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing. See you next time, everybody. Bye bye.